You've been getting lied to. I've been getting lied to. People are lying to us. We're gonna talk a little bit about it in this video. How about you, I'm Hank? Listen, we've been getting lied to about Korean tractors. There's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of uh, people out there talking about how tractors that are coming from South Korea aren't good. And we're going to talk about why that's not the truth and some of the things that they've talked that, that I've heard. And then we're going to talk about some of the things that uh, about uh, supposedly American made tractors because, you know, people think, oh, well, there's a one big American made manufacturer out here. And mm, maybe not. All right. So back in the day, you had John Deere, right? John Deere ruled the world. Then Kubota came along and Kubota became the number two guy. So John Deere and Kubota are usually known as the best tractors on the market. And rightfully so. They have um, really, really good products. They have really, really good um, capacities and capabilities in their equipment. But man, I'm telling you, you pay for that stuff that you can get the same capabilities and the same features in other tractors that aren't a Kubota or a John Deere. So let's talk about why you've been lied to and why I've been lied to about South Korea made tractors. Three tractors come out of South Korea that come to the top of my, my nugget. LS tractors, Coyote tractors, and TYM. Used to be Branson and TYM, now it's just TYM. Those three tractor manufacturers are gaining in popularity in the North American market because they're doing things right. They're doing their marketing right, they're doing their, their manufacturing right, they're hiring Americans, they're, they're uh, assembling their products in America. So things are going good for those three brands. And the reason is because people are starting to wise up to the fact that, hey, these companies actually make good products. And let's start with Coyote. Coyote uh, is, the parent company is Daedong, and they're out of South Korea. Daedong's been around since the 40s, started making tractors in the 1960s. I know a lot of I know a lot of coyote owners, and a bunch of those coyote owners are happy with the product that they that they have. The the coyote dealerships are expanding. Uh, we just had a new one open up recently. That's probably 30 minutes from me. Before that, the closest one was three hours. So the coyote dealerships are growing in number, and their tractor lineup is growing. Uh, they've got, I think, 19 different models somewhere around in there. I don't know how many. I think it's 19 is what I read. Anywhere between 19 horsepower up to, I think, 90 horsepower. They have a very popular CK series, very popular DK series, very popular NX series. And you can find these on YouTube all over the place. Uh, at my buddy Adam over at Hometown Acres, that dude has practically built his off-grid <laughs> uh, compound with his coyote and he's done he's put a lot of hours on it and he actually has a video out where he does i think it's a 200 hour review on his coyote so there's a lot of people getting a lot of use out of these coyote tractors they're based out of windale north carolina so they're hiring some tar heels you know to make the tractors and uh, there's I think they've made 14,000 tractors uh, in the previous reporting period. Uh, so it, maybe 21, 2021, 2022, somewhere around in there. 14,000 tractors were made by Coyote. And that means that people are taking them serious. But they're not the only ones that people take serious. The LS tractors are being taken serious as well. And they're also out of South Korea. They haven't been around as long as the Coyote tractor or as long as Daedong, they, they actually came around in the mid-70s. Around 1975, the LS brand was born. Now, they've been associated with a lot of different manufacturers. Kloss, uh, New Holland, uh, Mitsubishi, uh, Ford, Fiat. You know, that now the Fiat owns it, all that group and all that. Case, uh, Case New Holland. Uh, so there's been a lot of things going on with the LS tractor, but there's nonetheless, the LS tractor is still a popular brand among a lot of, of homeowners and, and homesteaders and, and people that have small farms. I don't know what the horsepower offering they go up to, maybe maybe 65, 75, I'm not sure about that, but my friend CJ over at Mallard Fied Farmhouse, uh, he's always showing off his LS tractor. My friend Davey over at Ohio Hilltop Farms, Hobby Farms, he's always showing off his LS tractor. There's several other channels out there that 
show off that how the LS tractor can work. My buddy Tony, one of my best friends, he used to drive the LS tractors before he went to TYM. He loved that tractor. Uh, but I'm telling you, so people have to take the LS offering very serious. And they're also, you know, they, they, the, even though they're manufactured in South Korea, they get boxed up and all that and then shipped overseas, they're shipped across the pond and then they get assembled here in America. And so I think that people say, you know, oh, these Asian based tractors are no good and all that stuff. Well, listen, they're, they're providing American jobs and they're providing a quality product, even though, you know, like I say, John Deere has been around since what, the 30s, 40s, maybe even earlier, at least, I don't know when the first John Deere was, but I mean, he's had a century <laughs> over a century to build his reputation or the company's reputation. When, when LS comes on the scene in 1975, I'm older than LS. <laughs> so, I mean, you can't turn a cruise ship on a dime. You know what I mean? So it takes a little bit for the brand to get established and for, uh, uh, for people to recognize, you know, oh, that's a blue tractor, that's an LS. Because if you go to some parts of the country and you'd be like, oh, that's a blue tractor, people automatically think New Holland. Or if you were back in the 80s, you'd be like, oh, that's a Ford. And so, I mean, it's a big hurdle to overcome, but I think that the more quality product they put out, the better that they'll be. I actually done some videos on the LS uh, MX series uh, that you can see here. Matter of fact, there's a lot of uh, videos that are very informative on Hank Hamilton. If you get a chance to spend another 10 minutes with us, go watch another video from us because we put out a lot of good information on the channel. And I think that LS is a fine tractor. I think that they do things right. I do think that uh, they could do some things a little better with their uh, with the beefiness of their tractors, but you know that's personal preference type stuff. Everybody can't have a you know a, a 42 inch rear axle. <laughs> you know you think about stuff like that, and LS for sure is a good quality South Korean made tractor. But that's, you know, we got Coyote, we got LS, but that's not the only one that comes out of South Korea. The TYM comes out of South Korea. So let's talk about the TYM Corporation just a little bit and why you should take TYM serious as a contender for your next tractor. So TYM, Tung Yang Moose Lan. <laughs> I'm sure that's not the way to say it, but TYM has been around, again, since the 50s, right? They start, that company's been around for the 50s, but they started seriously getting into tractors in the late 60s, early 70s. So again, they haven't been around as long as some of these other competitors, but uh, they've been around a long time to start making quality, and they just acquired Branson, so they've got more models and uh, things to choose from in their lineup. But the thing about the TYM tractors are they're now they've expanded into Georgia. They were being made out of out of North Carolina, or not? They were made in South Korea. They were being assembled in North Carolina, and now they've expanded to Rome, Georgia, where they took over, or they're building a twenty million dollar facility in Rome, Georgia, that's uh, on the same property as the Branson headquarters were when Branson was a tractor lineup. So TYMs, they offer a lot of different models. I've done videos on the, I've done, you know, obviously we got TYM on the channel. So you can see a lot of the, the TYM on the channel. Now, something I didn't know until I started researching this video is TYM actually started importing. Now, it's, it's a known fact that TYM makes a lot of tractors. They make some of the RK stuff. They make, like Yanmar TYM, they make a lot of tractors for a lot of people, right? So when a manufacturer says, hey, like John Deere, John, Yanmar made some tractors for John Deere. TYM, you know, they make the RK stuff. So your RK says, hey, here's the specifications I want. TYM builds it. They slap an RK sticker on it. So, you know, they have the specifications. But other companies don't search out bad companies to make products for them. And so if John Deere told Yanmar, hey, I want you to make this product for me, then Yanmar had to make a quality product. If Rule King said, hey, I want this tractor to have our name on it, then TYM has to meet the specifications for Rule King. So that says a lot about the company. They had a lineup called Millennium, I think it was. I never heard of that until I started researching this. And also Scorpion. And that ran from like the 1990 to 2005, like um, the Millennium ran from 1990 to 2001. And then they changed that name to Scorpion, and it ran from 2001 to 2005. I've personally never seen one. If you've got a Millennium or a Scorpion, let me know in the comments because that, that's a tractor I've never even heard of. Pretty interesting to see that TYM was associated with that for that uh, span of, you know, 15 years or whatever it was. You know, we talked about Coyote making 14,000 tractors last year. 
or last reporting period, TYM made over 10,000 tractors last year. So they're starting to get more of that market share. They're starting to get more, uh, you know, into the North American market where ho homeowners, landowners, homesteaders are taking a look at them. And they're saying, you know what, this is a serious tractor. I've got over a thousand hours on the TYMs that I, and branches that I've owned. I've had a 5220, the uh, 2505, the T224, and the, um, now the T574. So I've had about a thousand, over a thousand hours in Korea made tractors and zero issues out of any of them. I've had some issues where I have run over a stump and busted a hydraulic line. I've had an issue where I ran, uh, I backed up a, uh, my, my bush hog onto a stump and I bent a pin in the three point lift system, but that's stuff that I've done. And so when you, you know, when you put over a thousand hour on, on the Korea made tractors, that's a testament to the build quality of these particular, uh, tractors. So when people say, they you know they're cheap or whatever that's just not true we're being lied to and you've got to uh, you've got to put that to aside and understand hey listen these are some quality made tractors have you ever been to the national farm machinery show in kentucky or sunbelt ag expo moultrie georgia uh have you ever been to some of the other farm shows up upstate new york out west and oklahoma these tyms ls coyote these korean based or korean made tractors are well represented in these big farm shows. People are getting a chance to walk around them. People are getting a chance to look at them, crawl all over them. Um, there's a there's a dealer in Maine. It's uh, Scott's Recreation, and then Central New Hampshire Tractors. He's the same the same company there. Uh, they're selling they're selling TYMs by the by the boatload, man. But and they're putting on displays and they're putting on shows where people can come in and they can take a look at these tractors and say, oh, you know what? I do like this feature. I do like this how this is set up, the ergonomics of it, the the options that I get that are standard versus optional. And so people are starting to become more and more aware. And it's through videos like this where they're getting educated on how Korean made tractors are, are well built and how they are going to, how they're gaining in popularity in North America. Now what's going to happen in this video is I'm going to get the keyboard warriors get on here and be like, I had an LS and it broke a cylinder uh, ram, and the ram bent after seven hours of use and I didn't do nothing but try to pull up an oak stump with it. <laughs> or you're going to have a coyote owner that says, oh the linkage in my hydrostatic transmission popped out and I only had three hours on the machine. Or how many times have you seen people, how many times have you seen new tractor owners have their wheels fall off and they'll complain about it? Well, the, the owner's manual tells you clearly check them after 10 hours. But anyway, it just cracks me up when people just bash the brand. Oh, this thing's got seven hours. I had a 1975 Massey Ferguson that I had, I could, I could drive it through a brick wall and it wouldn't hurt. Well, listen, man, it, it, those days are gone. You know, you're not going to have... First of all, like the tier four engines are, are different and all that stuff, but every manufacturer has problems. Every single one of them. Uh, go to the John Deere forms, go to the Kubota forms. You're gonna see the exact same things over in those forms. You know, the people that, that talk the lot, the people that don't have any problems, they don't go to these forums and these Facebook groups and they don't, they don't say, you know what, I just went over 300 hours and my machine has zero issues. Now you'll see it once and twice, but you, by God, if you get a guy on there that breaks his, uh, you know, joystick in his cab or whatever, he's going to get on Facebook and he's going to tell the world that his his tractor and that manufacturer stinks, you know, because that's just what people do. They get on there and they air, they air their grievances on, on social media and on the computer and I understand why they do it because they want people to know that this product is, you know, was faulty. But very seldom do you get people on there that just praise the product over and over and over again. So take that kind of stuff with a grain of salt. Like I said, uh, every manufacturer has that problem. Is this video making sense so far? I mean, hopefully you've, you've, you've thought about some things and then if you're researching tractors, then, then uh, you, th you think, you know what, he's right. Or, you know, that guy's just blowing hot air. <laughs> so let me know in the comments which one you think it is. I uh, promise you're not going to offend me. Uh, but you also get, here's another thing that I get. The resale value, oh, but if I get a TYM, the resale value on it stinks. That is complete garbage, all right? First of all, don't buy a tractor to resell it. And the only reason you're going to sell it is to go up in size or down in size, probably up in size. 
Uh, but I, I didn't I didn't get the TYM to to make sure that you know I'll keep it three years in trade. It's not a vehicle; it's a farm tractor. People that say the resale value isn't as good as the John Deere Kubota, that's totally not true at all. So let me let me show you a couple of examples here. This is a Coyote 2022 RX 6620 for $33,000. Brand new, guess how much it was? $35,000. So it dropped $2,000 from the sticker prices. Okay, hold on a second before you get, uh, don't, don't get on the keyboard yet. These are just random prices that I pulled off Facebook Marketplace, not market as a whole. So this is Florida, um, you know, the middle of 2023. So I get it. Prices may vary. I'm just telling you what I saw. All right. This is uh, the data doesn't lie. All right. Take a look at this one. This is a 2021 LS XU 6168 cab tractor, $37,000 he wants for it. Guess what it listed at for new? $40,000 not a bad not a bad depreciation at all so you can see how this is going right let's take a let's take a look at another one here's a tym t264 dollars. guess what it listed for new sixteen thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars so you can see them starting to drop about two thousand dollars in price or something like that oh but john deere john deere holds its value let's take a look let's see what we can get with john deere this is a 2022 john deere 3025e Guy's asking $22,000 for it. Guess what it sold for new? $26,000. So there you go. It dropped $4,000 off the sticker price. So there you go. I mean, his dropped $4,000. The other one dropped $3,000. One of them dropped $2,000. So it's not, people say the resale value. That's, man, that's this garbage, you know? Now, are you talking about a tractor that was made in the 80s, the 70s and 80s? Like, a, like if you go look at a, a old John Deere, a old, you know, like a 4050 or something like that, does it still hold the value? Well, it still holds value, but not near as much as it was when it was new. But, uh, I mean, I'll give you that much on some of the old stuff. But when you start about talking about the 1 Series, 2 Series, 3 Series, um, you know, from like the 2015 to present, nah, they're all the same. I, 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 I don't care. I, I, don't, I don't believe your argument about um the resale value i just don't believe it uh the proofs in the pudding i've looked at marketplace when i was researching this video and i and and tractor data uh and uh there's a couple other websites um tractor house maybe was another one i can't remember now but so looking at these websites you'll see that all tractors hold their values pretty much and so not unless it's a gray market if it's gray market of a tractor that's a different story but some of these south korean made tractors definitely hold their value just as much as uh, John Deere or Kubota. So don't buy into that lie neither. You've been lied to. I've been lied to. It's not true. I hope this clears up some stuff. I hope that uh, you don't buy into the hype of the whole John Deere Kubota thing. And you know, it, I made a couple videos where I'm talking about John Deere and Kubota. I like John Deere. I like Kubota. I like all tractors. I like every single one of them, right? I just think it, what drives me crazy is people that get on the bandwagon for the John Deere and Kubotas. It drives me crazy because there's so many more good options out there. Don't, don't buy into the hype. Don't believe everything you hear about it because it just ain't true. <laughs> you know, and I get it. It's the whole Chevrolet versus Ford versus Ram. I mean, not everyone can drive a Ram pickup truck. I get it. I understand that. So, uh, but listen, if you guys do your research, find the one that works for you, find the best price point, the best financing, the best options, the best package deals, the best dealer, all that is important, and get the tractor that works for you. I'm not trying to sell you on a Korean tractor. I'm just pointing out the fact that there's a lot of misinformation out there about uh, some of the some of the the quality, I guess you would say, of a Korean-made tractor, and these Korean-made tractors are really, really good quality and they're just they're a force to be reckoned with they're great they're gaining in popularity and i'm telling you by the end of the next decade you're still john deere will still be number one and kubota will be number two but number three four and five are going to be the tym the coyote and the ls it's just it's just going to be that in the next decade they're going to have the big big market share because they're going to keep putting out quality tractors and people are going to take notice and they're going to start buying them i got a lot of videos on my channel that have tons of information i try to be very unbiased i don't try to sell you anything you buy the tractor that's good for you i'm just trying to get this facts out there i'm not i'm not telling you not to buy john deere or kubota 
but I am telling you that you can have you have other options. I don't need to sugarcoat nothing. I don't need to try to be biased because it just ain't it ain't who I am, and it's not it's not a fair video to you if I, if I do it that way. And and you guys are what makes this channel possible. So I appreciate you guys watching. Watch another Hank Hamilton video. I'll link it right here. You guys take care. God bless you guys.